Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. If you happen to have clicked on this episode thinking, wow, there's a great title. That sounds fascinating. I've never heard of that before. Melitza must have invented this. No, I didn't actually invent this. And I was bummed by the fact that I didn't invent the five kink languages. I actually was quite bummed by it. I, I went to go look it up just to see if I, if I truly was the only listing on Google for this. And I'm not, I'm not. And in fact, the other people who have written about it have used the similar concept that I was going to use too. So great minds think alike. And um, and I do want to give a shout out to the uh, one of the other uh, authors that wrote about the five kink languages. I'm giving a shout out to, um, she's a kink and uh, sex personality coach. And I'll just get her name for you guys because I don't I don't want you to think that I was the only one, but I did um, I did read her article as well, and it's a great article about the five love languages, kinky style, and her name is Jessica Acock. What a great name. She's an LCSW. I think that's a type of social worker, but also a kink and sex personality coach. So thank you, thank you to Jessica Acock for thinking similar to me. So what are we doing with these five kink languages? She called them the five love languages with a with like a kinky, um, like a kinky side, the kink edition. I'm just calling the five kink languages. We are going to use the five love languages as reference because a lot of people are familiar with the five love languages. And if you're not familiar with the five love languages, you might find that in me discussing these from a kink standpoint, that you might be able to identify more with your love language. Because a lot of times, if your kink version kind of reads really well for you, and you're like, yeah, that's me, the chances are that that is also your love language. And we're going to, you and, and I wrote things down because I know my brain. And then I, there's always one love language that I forget. And when I'm just bringing them up the top of my head, and it's usually the one I'm ignoring the most at the time. And I think on one of my shows recently, I had mentioned the five love languages. And one of the love languages I forgot to mention was acts of service. And, uh, and it is one that I actually live. It's my life. So I don't even think about it. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that, and, and then to acknowledge it, I needed to sit down and go, actually, this is what I do for a living. And this is what I offer people in the world is a service. So yay me, I figured it out. My brain got screwed back on and there we go. For those of you who are listening for the very first time, my name is Milica Yelenich, and I am a holistic health practitioner as well as a sex and intimacy coach. And in the holistic health practitioner side of my practice, what I found was that people were coming to me and oftentimes there were these things that they didn't, they were uncomfortable mentioning and they didn't really know what to mention. And by about the fourth session, they would finally say to me, I've got this problem. And oftentimes the problem was a lack of libido, a lack of interest in their partner, uh, hormonal things going on, not feeling very sexy, not really knowing why they're not feeling sexy or having troubles in their relationship. And that impacted their health greatly. So at the time, I didn't, I didn't specifically start to ask people like this is 15, 20 years ago. I didn't start diving into people's relationships. But now when I often talk to people about their health, if the door feels open, I will discuss relationships past, present and potentially future to see where people are headed, what they desire, what's lacking in their life and where they feel judgment towards themselves or towards other people so that we can start to shift that, start to feel the love 
and start to be able to heal. So part of my holistic health practice often will find its way into some sex and intimacy and relationship coaching just by the nature of it. The sex and intimacy coaching often lends a way into the health and holistic health side as well. For example, having somebody come who says, I have erectile dysfunction, uh, will often want to look at different things when it comes to their health, including things like their mental health. Or, you know, do they have porn addiction? Do they have, have they had surgery? Like, are they missing their prostate um, from surgery? Or do they have high blood pressure? Or do they have low blood pressure? Or do they have other things like severe, severe extreme diabetes? You know, all, all of those things can have be a factor in your libido, sex drive, and erection. So that, uh, they all tie in, guys. They all work together. And until about 10 years ago, when I started this radio show slash podcast slash now it's become TV as well, video, um, until the Pleasure Zone started, I often didn't introduce people to the idea that this is, you know, all works together. Although I knew it, I just didn't have a way to feel confident in being able to present the information. So why I'm saying that is if you are actually somebody who works with people and you're finding trends in your work and you have, um, and you feel like you have a knowledge or you have at least a curiosity and you like to research things or you like to share information, having a show like a podcast on Inspired Choices Network for me was one of the greatest ways to give me confidence, keep me learning, because this show always has me learning and doing research. And after 10 years, I should have a freaking PhD. Actually, some of my friends with PhDs have told me that I should have a freaking PhD. So for those of you who are interested in things, love the research, love talking, love sharing and creating content, you can always contact Inspired Choices Network and talk to the CEO because that's who you get to talk to and find out if you're fit for the network. So go over to Inspired Choices Network and there's a way that you can actually book uh, and discuss whether you would be a fit to be on the show, uh, have a show. How cool would that be? All right, guys. So enough about me. And if you would like to know more about me, you like to get to know me, we can always get on a coffee chat. You can book that on Inspired Choices. No, can you? Yes, you can book it through my profile page on Inspired Choices Network, but you can also book it on my website, milicayelenich.com. That's M-I-L-I-C-A-J-E-L-E-N-I-C.com. There's a book now link at the top. You can book a coffee chat with me and get to know me. And so, yeah, that's my offer of the hour. So we are going to get back into the topic, the very hot, steamy, sexy, kinky topic. And I know that some of you, if you're watching on video, you might be looking at me going, really? Are you really that kinky? Oh, the funniest thing about the kinkiest people I know is they're not that obvious. <laughs> so sometimes they'll be walking around in leather and different things that are more fetish wear. But a lot of times, what people do in their bedrooms, you don't necessarily see them carrying on with it in their regular lives. So yeah, good times. We're going to talk about the love languages gone about 180 degrees to the kinky side. Oh yeah. How exciting is that? We're going to start with uh, quality time. And so quality time from a kinky perspective. Well, let me first give you like a little hint into what is quality time normally. It would be spending quality time with your partner. So, you know, sometimes that's like having a picnic, going out to dinners and, you know, keeping the tech away so that you're actually engaging with each other, having conversations and making that time specifically about you and your partner, not about watching TV, not about watching movies. Although sometimes doing things like going to plays can be a little bit different because you might have a conversation after if you're actually engaging in conversation with each other that can be a kind of a form of, um, of quality time. But I really encourage you that uh, if quality time is something that you need to explore for you, in what way do you require that to feel fulfilled and loved? And then, you know, it could just be cuddling on the sofa or having dinner with your partner, 
just you and your partner and you know the kids are not there or your 12 other lovers are not there it's just two of you and or maybe it's all 12 of you as we talked about last year on the polyamory shows around this time of year so quality time for you it's really good to be clear on what that is for you how you would like to spend and invest time with your partner and then if that's something they feel comfortable with then doing that together that can really enhance your relationship now let's take it to the kinky side quality time on the kinky side so i had a few ideas here some of them could be this this could be kind of extreme kinky for some of you guys but if you are bound, say, to a bed or bound to um, like a post or something to that effect, uh, bound to your St. John's cross, what or St. Andrew's cross, I always get the name of the cross wrong, the cross, bound. If you, if you happen to be there and it's part of your kinky lifestyle with your partner, then having that time to just be there bound, you could have a lot of quality time if you're okay with that. Now, remember all things kinky. I mean, I think this is true for all of life, but especially for all things kinky, consent, consent, consent is required. And I'm also a fan of contracts. <laughs> That might be too extreme for some people, but having a, a spoken contract, having a written contract is even better, but having a spoken contract about what you agree to and what you don't agree to, having your safe words in place, always important, and having and giving consent. So knowing what the safe words are and knowing what some of the, the words are too that would say like, ramp it up, I want more, because not always, that's not always going to come out that clearly in kink because sometimes I want more is also stop like it can be very it can be very mixed up so being clear on your language before you start your play is really important so that that's a really kind of extreme version is having somebody like in a cage uh or tied up or where they are yours and yours alone and that's quality time and you are confined uh and you are with them so absolutely that requires a lot of trust and also 100% requires consent so if we want to take it a little less extreme like away from being in a cage or being tied up against a pole then one of the things that you could do is just having a kinky date night kinky date nights can be something like having going out to dinner um Let's go to Harry Met Sally, because most people know that movie where she fakes the orgasm in the restaurant. Well, you don't have to fake the orgasm. What you could do is get a vibrator and put it in your underwear. So whatever your genitals are, you can get a vibrator, like a we'll call it a panties vibrator, because that's usually what they're called. And they have uh, like metal flaps that wrap around the... Um, the gusset and then it kind of sits in there and you usually have a control like a like a what's it called that yeah you have like a control unit so you can check the speed turn it on whatever those mind you they do often make noise so you might want to go to a bit of a louder space if you're doing that unless you're really turned on by having people know that you have a vibrator in your panties and then in that case you're good on you and have fun I have to say that to date, I've never been in a restaurant where I've noticed or heard somebody having a vibrator in their panties. So I welcome it. I'm curious if somebody, you know, where are you people and where are the restaurants you're going to? But that was just a thought. <laughs> I mean, you could get even more vanilla on that and just have really romantic nights out. That can be kinky for some people and that's cool. I might just go to some extremes on the kink in the kink zone. So there are even more kinkier versions where somebody is like your full-time slave. So you'd have a lot of quality time with them uh, or sub. Some people would call it a slave. Some would call it a sub. So in the sub dom relationship, the dom would have the sub tied up and you would be guaranteed your quality time with your sub. So that's one thing you could do. And then we can get, like I was saying, less extreme than that. So 
in the tied up zone, I mean, you can add things and we will talk about how you can combine a lot of these things as well. Um, so in the quality time zone, you could also just go for like really, really long tantalizing foreplay that is just always on the edge of climax. So yeah, edging, like that can be a lot of fun for quality time too. Sounds awesome, right? So we're going to head to our first commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the five kink languages, basically the five love languages flipped on their side and how much fun can we have with those. Gary Chapman, I hope you are approving of this because this is based on your work of the five love languages, but uh, it is flipped on its side. And I do hope that it assists a lot of couples who maybe weren't clear on it, but then after hearing this, you might get more clarity about your five love languages, but also your five kink languages and how you can incorporate them. So we're gonna head to our first commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspire Choices Network. We'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are talking about the five kink languages, because why not? We've talked about the five love languages before, and absolutely am a fan of the five love languages, especially when doing relationship coaching, when people can get clear on what their love languages are and what the um, the dialect of the love, lang the love language is for them which is like getting clear on what you actually desire from your partner and in life in general. Most of the time, actually, it's all about your whole life. Uh, when you can do that, you can also take it to this other level that we're talking about tonight. And we can look at it from the kink perspective. So thank you, Gary Chapman, for getting clear on the five, la five love languages. Some people say there's seven different authors say different things, but I like sticking it to the five. It stays nice and clear. And then flipping it to the 180 degree of kink can also bring in some fun and different play. And remember, all things kink require absolute consent. Effort, everything in life should require consent, but especially, especially when it comes to kink, you require consent. Verbal is great, written even better. So have your safe words in place. And negotiate some things in advance it's really good to get clear on what you desire so we're going to talk about one of the other love languages which is gifts and then we're going to flip it on its side so the love language of gifts is usually where somebody just enjoys 
uh, sometimes it's big lavish gifts. Uh, you might have heard on social media, especially where people talk about getting rings for when they're pregnant or they're they just given birth and blah, blah, blah. And these are people who probably their primary love language is gifts or their partner giving those rings is probably gifts. Giving these things for, you know, certain particular reasons or knowing the timing, giving them gifts for, you know, it was the anniversary of our first kiss. That can also help uh, when receiving gifts because that means that the person's not only thinking about you, but they're thinking about how they can make you happy, right? So somebody could be thinking of you, but they're thinking about how to make you miserable. So thinking about you, you know, when somebody's like, I was thinking about you, I'm like, oh, okay, do you want to kill me or do you want to love me? Like, it's probably one or the other, let's face it. But might I... I was just digressing there for a second, and we're going to go back to gifts. So gifts on the non-kinky form could be some pretty uh, average things, you know, some flowers, some maybe some, I'm only going to kink in my head, so I got to go back. So flowers, but flowers can be kinky too, because if you have a flower fetish, being gifted flowers can be one of the kinkiest things going. So... Yeah, so then we've got um, anything that could be average, like a ring. But then again, that might be kinky for other people too, especially if it's a C ring, if you know what I'm talking about. That could be very kinky. So you go for the gifts, whatever you think. You know, nice Christmas presents, nice birthday presents, all that kind of stuff. Anniversaries of everything presents. It's a Friday, here's a present, that kind of thing. So if your love language is presence, then your tendency is to want to give people presence and also receive them. So you'll probably notice when it comes to love languages and kink languages, the things that people would like to gift are usually also the things they would like to receive. Often when it comes to love, that's true. And sometimes with kink, that's also true. Sometimes you just like being the dom. Sometimes you like being a switch, which is being both sub and dom. Sometimes you just like being the sub. So that's for quality time though, but we're going to come back to that around acts of service because it's relevant to that as well. So uh, yeah, so getting back to gifts. So how do we take our gifts and make them sexy? How do we take, I don't know, what present could be sexy? Guess what? Lots of things. Lingerie, a new set of like, vloggers like leather vloggers and let like a nice paddle you can get some pretty cool kinky toys nipple clamps that are shiny you can get like fancy butt plugs that have fun things on them like sex toys galore so for uh, several years I was part of a an online um, sex toys company that was like a it was for like home parties and had a lot of fun and a lot of different products a lot of them were fairly vanilla, but they started to have a little bit more things in the kinky zone too. So you could get so many things that could be gifts that would add to the kink. And they might actually add to other things too. So say you're getting some beautiful silk ties to be able to tie your lover to the bed or tie their hands so that they'll be confined for quality time. You could try that. Or to just help with anything to do with sensory deprivation with covering their eyes. So delightful. So <laughs> what we can also do is look at the toys, not just from the kinky kinky, like not just like kinky sex toys, like butt plugs and shiny nipple clamps and all kinds of restraining tools and, um, and impact tools. We can like look at all kinds of things and it could be like a gift could even be like a sexy game that you made. And I've been debating for a while making this uh, kind of a sexy play game for people's for people's to have fun and not have to think about what we're going to do game with some but in the meantime you can make your own by all means um I do three sets of cards locations acts and then um maybe also things you would add like different toys so the locations might be for example bedroom outdoors bathroom kitchen counter those are a couple ideas and then acts might be like oral sex anal sex um 
stroking massage whatever and then the next one might be that you're adding toys so you could get like in the kitchen you're getting anally penetrated and there's nipple clamps involved under the toys section so you can just list a bunch of toys and then you can just like pick one from each how fun is that it's like clue but for sex in a way who did it in the where where let's find out so I feel free to make your own and if you're waiting for my game cool let me know in the comments if you're listening on any uh channel that you can actually write comments and you would love to play my sexy kinky fun game with the locations and the acts and the different things you can do let me know it'll inspire me to make it faster and get it out there in the world so the more i know there's demand the more motivated i am to get going so one of the other things you could do for gifts is say for example something simple like here's some fun playful lube or some massage lotion or you know you can keep it kind of vanilla too it doesn't always have to be nipple clamps although they're always fun to have so after like looking at the gifts and what you might like to receive it's it would be good too to let your partner know because sometimes partners they don't know they don't know what you like and they're not in your head so leaving little lists behind can be helpful be like you know what I'd really like in this in this next year here's my top five asks for gifts and then let them go for it right in their own time in their own way and that way you're getting things you like yes it might take away some of the mystery but also it might get them creatively thinking because they might look at your list and then it'll give them other ideas along the lines of things you're asking for as well so another gift could be that you're gifting your partner a trip to say like hedonism in jamaica if you are though they might like to know in advance unless you have one of those relationships where everybody already knows that this happens and it's like here's the gift of the year let's go to hedonism and find other lovers for the week however if that's not something that you guys have in your relationship don't go surprising your partner with something like that unless there's been pre-discussion and all that jazz again consent is really important you don't always show up at a sex resort without your partner knowing where they're going so next on the list is touch and touch for a lot of people can bring up a lot of things like there are a lot of people who have aversion to touch completely so touch when it comes to love languages can be something as simple as having a cuddle or a hug or an acknowledgement a pat on the back a holding of hands a public display of affection can be really nice for people whose love language is touch and sometimes it can be touched too when it comes to like kissing is a kind of a, in the love languages of of touch and sex is is one of those as well sex in the traditional sense of penetration oral sex could be part of that as well so when we take it to the kinky one of the things you could do is withhold touch say for example you're playing with quality time and touch and your partner is strapped to a bed but the play part of it is that you sit there maybe reading a book while they're strapped to the bed naked and they have to beg you and, and say nice words so you can see how we can combine all of these they might have to say some really um words of affirmation to you like yes mistress you are the sexiest mistress i've ever seen that kind of stuff uh and then they get their touch and they might get their genitals stroked or their favorite part stroked again consent in advance and having these scenarios understood is really helpful as well so i hope you guys are kind of getting the idea that these things can all intertwine and create some really fun scenarios in in your sex life for sure so kinky kinky touch too we've also got things like impact play again absolutely you require consent and then what is impact play so usually with impact play you're you're aiming for some of the meatier parts of the body is like that part of the bum cheek just where your bum and your leg kind of meet just above that is a, a place where a lot of nerves come uh come in and through and into your genitals up and around through there from your spine so slapping in that area or any kind of impact play in that area 
can stimulate your genitals, which is really cool because if you're kind of like wanting a new way to have your genitals stimulated, having some spanking right on that, that sort of lower part of your bum cheek is a great way to do it. Also having some impact play on the nipples, whether it's just like a light slapping, sometimes using like a paddle for that, but like a light paddle or using uh, like whips of different kinds, different textures to drag on the body or just do like a quick slap can be really delightful for touch too. So when it comes to touch, I encourage you to go and, and explore the five kinky touches <laughs> or the they're more like the five touch line, which is by, I can't remember the lady's name, but she talks about there's like kinky touch and there's like a touch where you kind of are, um, what does she call it? It's like where you kind of morph into all the touches and it's light touch and there's deep, pen more penetrative touch. I'll get the names for you guys. So when we come back from break, I'll let you know what those five touches are. Uh, and then we'll dive more into the touch of the kinky touch. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email. Info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who are listening today, you might be feeling like some of the stuff is really making sense for you. And maybe you hadn't heard of the five love languages before, but listening to these five kink languages just makes total sense for you. And I get that. The truth is probably whatever you're identifying with when it comes to the conversation around kink languages is also probably something that you have in common with your five love languages. So just something to consider. And then you can always take the love language quiz online and find out what your love language is. And then you can find out what your kink language is if you just contact me through my website, melitzayelenich.com, and we can kind of discuss and figure out what is your kinky kink type. The first 15 minutes is free. If you are looking for coaching, if you are looking for a meet and greet, it's also free. And if you would like more time, you can always pay for that. So 
we are going to dive in a little bit more on the touch scene. So the five touch um, blueprints, which, you know, are really, really cool method of uh, looking at, you know, bodies and what they do and how they, um, how, how we receive touch. So the, the woman who developed the five the, the blueprints, which are five touch languages, we'll call them. Her name is Jaya. Um, and she spent just decades researching the science of arousal and pleasure. So you might have seen her on, there was a Netflix special called Sex, Love and Goop. You would have seen Ga Jaya on there. She was working with a couple who were on a massage table, teaching them different forms of touch. Um, highly recommend watching that. She was also one of the coaches for my sex and intimacy coaching. Really fantastic um, work. Really fun stuff to play with and learn. So the five touch languages are energetic, which can be just conversation, but it also can be where you're doing energetic stuff, where you're touching somebody from a distance or far away or barely touching them so that it's an energy exchange. Then there's sensual which is all about using your senses. So it can be, you know, smells can be involved like different scents and aromas and um, also using your fingers, but you know, things like taste and sight and all of your senses are included. And there's like proprioception and introception. And we talked about those before on other episodes. So you can go back and listen to those. So essentially, and we've also talked about these five uh, touch blueprints before many, many times. You can go back and search that out. So um, the sensual the sensual ones are, I mean, I actually think I'm probably a shapeshifter. I like them all. And unfortunately for my lover, that makes it more difficult for him because things can change and, and it can be different any and every time. Fun for me though, because it can be different any and every time. <laughs> so it does require having a lot more conversation if you're a bit of a shapeshifter when it comes to touch. So We've got energetic, we've got sensual, we've got sexual, which is like just getting down to the nitty gritty. Like you've got a body part, I've got a body part, let's stick them together. Okay, cool. They don't really like to have a lot of um, foreplay or waiting or anything like that. Now it can be tricky if you're like an energetic uh, type of receiver when it comes to touch and your partner's very sexual and just on it and, you know, just a very super actively uh, at it that's a good time to negotiate that sometimes you can do it their way and sometimes you do it your way, but it doesn't mean you have to leave your lover. It just means you need to like negotiate so that you can both have what you need. Could also be that you, you just get it on to get the sexual partner satisfied so they don't get bored and disinterested. And then they take care of your business after where you might feel more energetic or sensual, but it's important that you're both feeling fulfilled uh, in this, in the touch zone. So we've got, energetic, we've got sensual, sexual, kinky. So kinky is where this BDSM fun play comes in, where we're talking about impact play, um, you know, like the spanking, but also things like hot and cold play. So melting wax on your body, the wax needs to be a certain kind of wax, just FYI. And again, consent, 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 can't stress that enough. You can get waxes specifically that can go on bodies that are usually massage um, they're kind of, they can be used for massage and they're usually soy based, but you can find if you have soy allergies and you don't want to use that, um, because even though you're not ingesting it, your body might have a reaction to it. So look, uh, look through some of the different things online, uh, different kinky hot oils too. Some of them will have different bases to them. They can be warmed up and not become like cooking oil and, and burn you and cold objects too you can play with all kinds of things like popsicles and ice cubes and cold anything ice cream yeah so touch can be really fun and a lot there can be a lot of play that happens with touch and done a lot a lot of shows on touch because it is one of my primary love languages and i love talking about it um and so talking about kinky and then shape shifter is where we get into all of them can be difficult because you're not not ever sure which one you're into and one day you might be like spank me and the next day you're like okay now i actually need you to um just get it on with me fast and then the next day you might be like hey could you just like 
hover above my body and see if you can give me an orgasm from 10 feet away. Cool. Can be tricky. And it takes presence, a lot of presence to be with somebody who's a bit of a shapeshifter. And kudos to them who do it. So, <laughs> that's my take on it, kids. So we're going to move on and then we'll talk about some combos of how we can throw all these kinky love languages together to have some fun, fun times, some fun scenarios. So we've got acts of service. Service. What a fun word when it comes to kink. Being in and of service. This is really fun for the dom sub situation. We talked a little bit about before with, with um, the, the one with quality time where, you know, the dom could be tying up the sub for an extended period of time or putting them in a cage. And then the quality time is like guaranteed. Uh, so, or that they are told they need to like come be your live in sub for life, you know, and then they just agree to that. Some people have a 24 seven lifestyle of kink where their relationship is all that. And sometimes um, that isn't the case. Sometimes it's just for play, just for fun. And sometimes you know, it can be uh, like a hired out time as well. So it's more professional in that way. So acts of service with the dom sub relationship, we've got, uh, we've got some fun things we could do there. Okay. So scenarios. So I did talk a bit about, um, you know, tying the partner up as the dom. One of the things with acts of service is that the dom will be sometimes even doing things for the sub. So say somebody takes on the role of being the dom when it comes to earning the money or doing all the, the stuff around the house, the sub can actually kind of relax and chill and just receive. And again, this all needs to be consensual. But if you look at a lot of traditional marriage type roles, and I was watching something about, I was watching, um, something on Netflix, no, YouTube, uh, about this woman who travels around and stays with people. And one of the families she stayed with was a couple who in the last five or 10 years went super traditional. And the wife had like two master's degrees, super educated, more educated than her husband, but her husband had more earning potential. And they chose that they wanted to have a traditional life. So the, the wife is now a stay-at-home mom and loves it, loves the idea that she doesn't have to do the grind every day. And he makes the choices. He is the dumb. And their relationship is, and I don't even think they even realize how kinky it is, but their relationship is incredibly kinky in terms of he's the dumb, she's the sub. So for some people who are really, really uncomfortable with that scenario of having somebody be your dom, maybe you're more comfortable being the dom. And if you are, then you might need a sub in your life to feel a little bit happier around acts of service, somebody that you can constantly do service for and uh, please them. So that's fun, right? So part of being the dom sub relationship too is that, you know, as as a dom, you could also have with, you know, acts of service that the that the person doing your the the sub might actually know what their rule, what the what their roles are, right? So we'll take that traditional housewife role. And if you know that your role is that you're doing the laundry, you're going to have everything ironed, you're going to have the dishes done, the house cleaned, uh, all the all the things, all the traditional housewife roles done. And the dom uh, acknowledge and appreciates that you and and keeps you in, on track in line and, and might even use some some different things like uh, words of affirmation, like you're a good girl to keep you in line. That would be a little bit more on, on track with the dom sub situation. If you also get some words of affirmation, like, oh, you're, you know, you're so sexy when you iron my shirt, or, you know, you're so hot when you're down on the knees, on your knees, scrubbing the floor. That kind of adds to the dom sub quality of the relationship, especially when we're looking at the traditional housewife role, which quite a few people are getting back to, there's kind of a switch in society where people are uh, choosing to have relationships that are much more traditional. And um, it's it works for them. Like, I'm a fan of if it works for you, do it. If it doesn't work for you, don't do it. So in the dom sub role too, again, it doesn't have to be your full-time life. 
it can be something that you just do for play. And it could be too that you're, you know, you're as a dom, you might have your sub do things for you, like work for you. And that, you know, for for example, as a dom, you might be a fin dom, which is like a, a fin dom is somebody who gets money just for being. And so as a fin dom, you might be like, hey, uh, you know, I would just like $25,000 a week to be in your life. And the sub is like, okay. And they, you know, work their butts off. Like their main thing in life is to work for you and they love it. And then, you know, you financially abuse them and they're turned on by it. Again, that's an act of service. And at the same time, 100% consent. If you are doing the, the fin dom situation, I recommend that uh, you have that in writing for sure. So you don't get in trouble for... I don't know, like extortion or something. All right, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about words of affirmation, how we can play with those on the kinky zone. <laughs> and uh, I think we're wrapping the show up because the show is just flying by. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution. Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we're talking about the five kinky languages, like the five love languages with a spin. Uh, so yeah, we've been having a lot of fun and and one of the things that um, that you know I've been exploring on this show is that we have the chances are that the things that we have as kinky love languages are also the things that we have as our actual love languages. So our kinky languages and our love languages tend to go together. So if you don't, or if you haven't heard of the five love languages, I encourage you to head over to check what your love language is and then see if you know while listening to this show whether some of the things that i've mentioned under these categories of the kinky languages also fits with what your love language primarily is so you'll probably have a few a few love languages that read and generally we have all five but they just some are more top priority than others and uh, the same is probably true when it comes to kink. If you're into kink, that you probably have a little bit of something going on in each category, but there'll be some top ones. Um, but then again, you might have all five equally. Who knows? You could be special. So one of the things that we haven't discussed yet or kind of tapped into just briefly is using words of affirmation for the five kink languages. And we basically have two categories. And the first one that I was thinking about is more listed under what would be degradation. And so degradation is where you might say, now degradation is a tricky one, guys, because there can be a line that gets crossed that could cause and create some uh, anger, resentment, and fights. So you need to be clear on the words that your partner can receive and are, you know, are cool with receiving. So if if your partner says you're a sexy little slut, and you're good with that but if you know they call you a 
you know, you're such a rough bitch, but rough bitch doesn't work for you. <laughs> that makes you feel like uncomfortable and angry. It's good to know the words that actually work for the words of affirmation, like, hey, you sexy bitch. Um, I get called sexy pants by my husband. And I was like, all right, I like that name. <laughs> so whatever, whatever words work for you, but probably if you called me uh, dirty panties, I'd be like, no, that doesn't work for me. Although for other people being called dirty panties would probably turn them right on. So it's not like an, uh, it's not a one size fits all with this. Like you really need to know your partner and know what words will work for them. And in things like uh, using degradation of, oh, you know, you smell like, you know, you smell like you just screwed a thousand people could be really kinky to somebody, but then to other people it would feel really degrading. So getting some clarity on that, some praise ones too are relevant too. So you got degradation, uh, which is, oh, you, oh, here's some other examples of degradation. Oh, like you're, you're, can't say the C word, but um, just consider this to be the C-O-C-K in here, but I'm going to say penis instead so that it can go uh, through the algorithms. Your penis is so tiny. That would be degradation. Now, for some people, that could set them off to needing uh, therapy, but for other people, that would be like a really big turn on, or your penis is so hard and long, right? But definitely use um, more fun, playful words that are sometimes more derogatory we'll call it like this saying c-o-c-k specifically which if i was on like fat life i could say that out loud and not be banned but since this is going on to networks that are not like that don't want to be banned and you can also say things uh like about uh, any kinds of genitals and just use the more we'll call it derogatory terms as long as your partner is completely uh in consent with that, with that language. So, so yeah, the praise would be like, oh, your penis is so big and hard. And then degradation might be, oh, your penis is so tiny and limp, right? So you can, either way, you can play with those degradation and praise. And some people like both and some people like one more than the other. So when it comes to the kinky side of things, you can get pretty playful, but again, when it comes to degradation, you really need to get clear. Also, when it comes to praise, your idea of praise might be very different than your partner's. And some of the words you use might not feel so praise-like to you. So being clear with that with your partner as well, like that that word doesn't work for me, but this word does. Like if somebody says you got a nice booty, but you're like, oh, I don't like the word booty. Can you say that I have a nice uh, tuckus, I don't know, tuckus, what a weird word, but maybe you like that word instead. <laughs> and so you just ask for the words that you like. And if you have a weird time saying that, then write them down for your partner or sex them and let them know, I just want you to tell me I'm a good girl. You know, that's another one. You hear people say that to animals all the time. You're a good girl. You're a good boy. And then if you said it to humans who are more than three years old, uh, you know, it gets, or maybe 10 or 12 years old, it gets a little odd, you know, you're such a good girl, such a good boy, <laughs> but you know, people like it and they, they get turned on by that. So go for it, go for the words that feel, especially when it comes to words of affirmation through kinky praise, go for the words that you think might even be awkward and see what your partner thinks of them before using them in the context of sex play. Like, how do you feel about me calling you a good girl? Some people would just lose their mind over that. They'd be so upset that you're referring to them as girl rather than woman. Um, so, you know, that even that could be set people off. So really important to get clear, even when you're using praise, especially when you're using degradation on what the words are, are for everybody and combine these things and have fun. Throw in your words of affirmation with your you know, quality time and your acts of service and reading them a story while they're lying in bed while you're telling them they're a good Thank girl. you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in.
to your body.